Uh, greetings uh, from the Center for Serial Research and Treatment at MGH. <clears throat> During these challenging times, we've been uh, constantly in touch with our celiac community and we received many, many queries um, on many aspects of uh, celiac disease related to this uh, pandemic. And one of the most frequent questions, because timely, important, has been what should we do with our kids? Uh, now that uh, school reopening is uh, it's on, on our doorsteps. Uh, it is safe for a child with celiac disease to attend school. Um, uh, what are the challenges? Where are the uh, measures that we have to implement to protect our kids? And most importantly, when uh, given the opportunity uh, to choose between in-person uh, education and remote, uh, we're really struggling which direction to go because we prefer to be more conservative and to protect our kids and therefore we're biased toward the remote uh, teaching. So those are the kind of questions that we are facing on a regular basis uh, from uh, the people that they follow us um, on our media. I have to reiterate what I said at the very beginning, and I believe that this is not being changed as a, a aspect of the situation. Provided that celiac disease is well controlled by a strict, strict gluten-free diet with no symptoms, no antibodies positive, everything is fine, and so on and so forth, people with celiac disease, including kids, are pretty much indistinguishable from the general population also, when it comes down to the capability of the immune system to fight enemies like the COVID-19 virus. For that reason, the same decisions that applies for all the other kids apply for kids with celiac disease. Said that, I understand that, you know, there are additional challenging, uh, challenges um, when it comes to, uh, you know, attending school, um, you know, with the kids with celiac disease, particularly for the uh, lunch needs, the fact that uh, there, there are some schools that they will not provide lunch during the first phase, or if they do, would not provide the lunch in the cafeteria, that can be a good thing or bad thing, depending, uh, you know, how you see the story and, and how you evaluate this. The reality is that even if what I said stands, uh, but we are in a very steep learning curve, and therefore, you know, the, for sure, what's, uh, you know, this SARS-CoV-2 virus uh, has to uh, do in terms of Im impinging on the immune system of people with celiac disease is not 100% known. And a while ago, we launched a survey among people with celiac disease to see what is the rate of attack of the virus among celiacs. And, and we're elaborating this data. And, you know, as soon as we have some more firm results, we will definitely share with everybody. So far, anyhow, what I just said stands. So there is no, uh, you know, condition uh, or situation that, you know, eventually would prevent to go to school. The reality of the story is that like any other kids, um, uh, we need to make aware everybody, and we've been publishing this, and this raised a lot of media interest, that contrary to our early belief, uh, kids are not spared by the infection they can be infected. What is interesting and still puzzling to understand is that when infected, they develop little no symptoms. And that's the reason why at the beginning of the pandemics, we didn't see kids among the, the people that were floating in the hospital because infected with the virus. And therefore we reached the conclusion that kids who are not, you know, affected by this infection, but actually they are in the submerged part of this huge iceberg of these pandemics. I, the people, they have little or no symptoms and therefore they don't come to the attention of the healthcare profession. What that means, uh, we don't know yet. The fact that they have a lot of viruses in their upper airways, uh, the fact that they have the receptor for the, for the virus that we didn't know before, the fact that they mount an immune response against the virus all suggests that they, you know, not only are infected by the, the, the immune system, see the enemy coming in and react accordingly. If these kids now can, you know, eventually spread the virus and what will be the consequence of this spreading, we don't know yet. And this of course applies to kids with celiac disease. So to summarize, you know, we are not here to suggest if you're sending your kids to school or not, because this is a, is a decision that really requires a, a variety of variables to be considered, including how hot the area where you live in terms of pandemic. 
what kind of measures the school is implementing, what reassurance you know the policymakers is giving to keep the, the the kids and the teachers safe. But assuming that the decision is to send your kids to school, you need to be aware that they can contract the virus and once contracted, they can possibly spread the virus. We don't know if that's the case. The only way that this will be minimized as a risk is what has been proved to be successful so far. So physical distance, frequent uh, hand hygiene, and most importantly, wear a mask. If we send our kids to school and these three uh, you know, measures are implemented, I think that the minimal risk is worthwhile to be eventually considered in exchange to have these kids that finally can be uh, capable to have a, a, an in-person teaching experience. Uh, if this measure, for whatever reason, cannot or are not implemented, together with the low threshold in new testing, now that testing is more available, uh, of course, the element of risk increases. So keep that in mind and uh, act accordingly. So with that, um, you know, again, stay tuned because this is an evolving, uh, you know, situation. As soon as we have other news, we will definitely share. Stay well, stay safe.